Invisibility for the Spirit Fox saves her, passes the defenses off. Spirit Fox saves her again. Spirit Fox is doing some good work here. Ricochet Cannon goes down. Expo drops. One more invisibility. This new VM Legacy roster is insane. Ninja, Uriam, Fluxy, Darkstar, and the former Navi player, Synthe, all coming together into one team. And Darkstar is going to start us off here today as they take on Limerick for the quarterfinals of the Iron Cup. So, looks like he's just starting with a little bit of lightning that was able to take down everything on the edge of the base there and quickly cuts it out there with a couple of headhunters and minions taking out the defensive king forming the funnel and now he'll charge in his heroes he does not have the force here to drive the heroes all the way to the town hall takedown so he will need to lalo the town hall so looking at hero equipment we got a level 18 giant gauntlet with the rage gem or rage vial i mean invisibility vial with the, which is maxed out here for dark star not pumping any resources into Archer Pump. A lot of people waiting for the Frozen Arrow to come out, but is stacking some points into the Life Gem because he is a Lalo player. Lalo with a Life Gem is one of those critical pieces of equipment, and it's one of the ones that is going to be used in Life Gem more than anything else there. But Eternal Tome, obviously really good. And then he also maxed out his Royal Champion equipment as well. So let's see what we can do with it. Heroes were able to claim out a pretty solid chunk of the base there. Queen went inside there, got the Clan Castle dealt with, dealt with those Ice Golems, and we are looking at a single Inferno on the other side of the base there. So Lalo should be able to handle that quite well. Seen a lot of people switching over to single Infernos when you see... The big tanky troops there taking over the meta a little bit there. You see all the Root Rider attacks. You see all the Electro Titan attacks there. And Single Furrows do quite well against it. But when you have Lalo players that are able to take advantage of that with lots and lots of swarms of light to medium troops there, then obviously single infernos are going to face some difficulties. But he quickly and easily powers through that. Just need to make his way into the monolith in the core of the base there. Has the RC ability. Can swag it or pop it right there there we go and he can just use that freeze there and power through it's a triple on the board vm legacy and i i would say this is their debut match there but they actually played a war right before this to overlap one of the other wars that we ended up watching and it actually ended with a 15 13 i forget who their opponent was i think it was uh Pamsis? They got a 15-13 victory over them. So they're hot, they're hot off of a perfect war. And they're going for another one right here as they start off with a triple. VM Legacy stands for Vogue Marie Legacy. They are a new esports team to step into the Clash of Clans space there. So we welcome them with open arms. And it's nice to see the teams getting some support there. Hopefully we see that name stick around. They were playing under the name All-Stars as we saw them play before they debuted their new org, before they signed contracts and all that. So, nice to see this team gathering up a group of, like their team suggested, all-stars. There's so many good players on that team, but Limerence is also a very good team. So let's not sleep on them as they go in with a couple of Rocket Blues to go set funnels and I assume Shoot E drags right through the town hall behind the sweepers. Flame Flicker getting a nice head start at the top of the base there. And will just cost a little bit of time there, but it'll eventually die to the expo here. So it's not going to go too much further. I'm surprised he hasn't started. Wait a second. That's what he's doing. He was trying to get the air defense down. And an Electro Dragon will step in and take out the back end Eagle Artillery. And that is going to massively decrease the damage that these E-Drags are taking. But he's not even done there. He's going to take a couple more shots over there. Didn't quite get the air defense down. The battle builder on the backside will go to work there. And the flame figure drop out super minions that will get out that multi inferno. And if they take the multi, then they take out the ricochet cannon and the expo, which will help out the heroes in the back end of the base there. But the Tesla may claim them before they can get there. And the Tesla pops and ends up defending that area. But the electric dragons end up taking the town hall down. Getting some chains through the core of the base there. They got the clan castle. I wasn't watching to see what came out of the clan castle, if anything. But the clan castle goes down to the e drags, and the heroes never set up the range there. Then any ground targeting things like ice golems and lava hounds will go down with it. Over the left side, King will pop his giant gauntlet. He's got the frosty, level 20 of the giant gauntlet. Maxed out on the 
invisibility file and he was running the healing tome and the eternal tome with the electric dragons we're typically going to keep them raised up and keep the funnel tight there so there's not really a big benefit to using a rage gem it's more about just keeping them alive so they can take advantage of the rage spells that you already have so grisha gets it done uriam was a former millisim mg player but that team dissolved the players went all over the place there and obviously He's a major, major pickup here for the VM Legacy roster. Looks like he's got some super barbarians. We got Rue Riders and just gonna go up, uh, go ahead and freeze that area there. I don't know if that freeze was necessary. What was the point of that freeze? What was the point of that freeze there? He ends up getting that blip intercepted. The super archers drop out. I don't, I have no idea why he froze that over there. Is the Tesla, he's just trying to stop the damage from the Tesla. Maybe trying to make sure that he could get the balloons deep enough there to clear the traps. I'm not entirely sure why he froze there, but I will not doubt his judgment. We will, I already did. <laughs> Too late for that. Uh, we will get the town hall down and we get everything of value out of the core there, except for that multi inferno. Although ricochet cannons on a ground attack here could prove to be trouble, but the fact that he was able to do that and not invest the warden is the most critical factor. But the warden can be running a level 11 rage gem. They really need to get that up to level 12. Want those three level increments there to get the biggest benefits because that's when the extra every three levels at that third level benchmark is when we get an extra 5% boost to the entire army's damage. But he's actually bump points into the rage gem and the giant gun that also like one level off of the big boost there maybe he's struggling to get enough of uh, the the glowy ore that's the middle one the, the purple one right it, maybe he's not getting enough uh, glowy ore to get those uh those extra levels there and he's just pumping up the levels that are getting the shiny ore i don't know i i'm having to actually figure out exactly how the economy for the hero equipment is going to flow in long term but the room riders end up open up the base here and go into the multi inferno giving the king and the queen access to move forward there but then they're going to split and the split for a temporary amount of time there causes one of them to almost go over the open of the next walls here but it's going that way now king will break the walls with his giant gauntlet and they will power through the back side here he's also maxed out his royal champion shield as well but i uh, i'm not really a big fan of his approach here he decided to go in opposite of the eagle artillery and so he ends on the eagle artillery so a very very late approach means he was taking damage all the way through the base there which obviously has not slowed him down here got the headhunters on the defensive king pops that rc ability swag and that level 18 shield sweeps through and clears out of the triple for vm legacy let's get into david david going in for limerence we got the queen charge with root riders just dive into the quarter compartment there gonna get the expo down and which way is this queen gonna end up going she's going south she's got the opening in the wall right there so she's definitely going south so he needs to cut her off here with the root riders and get the support at the monolith to make sure she doesn't go down but a wall break travels in and looks like she definitely needs to get cut off here so she goes inside the base and goes and secures the tunnel takedown so taking his time here here comes rocket balloons and ice golems now would be a good time to get the bottom of the base there starting to clear it out he's got a Flame Flinger selected initially, but he just swapped it out to a battle draw. I was about to say, right as I saw a swap, that he needed to either get that Flame Flinger moving or get rid of it because waiting until this far of the attack there, you already lost the opportunity to use it. You gotta start it from the very beginning. Usually it's the first thing you do whenever you want to break it out there. But Root Riders and a battle drill begin in, and the battle drill plus the diggy will both take stuns on the defenses. And for other hero equipment, we're looking at a level 18 giant gauntlet, queen running base equipment, healing tome on the warden. Lots of people running either healing tome or rage gem, but I think with the rude riders, the rage gem tends to be better because rude riders already have an insane amount of HP, and it's just about increasing the damage of the warden and the world champion that is going to be traveling nearby, or maybe the queen in the case that's happening right now. But at least he gets to heal through the town of poison. And he'll get everybody to get topped off a little bit there. Remember, when you have the Eternal Tome and the Healing Tome used together, then you have Invincibility that gives you a chance to get topped off there while you're waiting for the Healing Gem to just bring everybody back up to full HP. And then it keeps on healing for even longer past that. But looks like the Rude Riders are going to start to move north here. Going to take a second for them to open up the wall, but they will eventually get it open. I think he lost his Queen there. The Defensive King is able to take out the Royal Champion. Maybe this doesn't have a guaranteed triple right now. I'm not sure if he has enough to get 
Ah, maybe he does. The defensive king is his biggest problem right now, but the offensive king breaks the wall. He steps in, and he does get the defensive king out of the way there. Clears up the grass skellies. Now it's just a matter of can we get past the ricochet cannon, but with the healers, I think he's in a good spot here. Healers have done so much work to keep everything alive and moving. And yeah, just a lot of healing output. Go, sacrificing damage output for extra, extra healing output. But honestly, I think if you're running healers, getting a 50% boost to your healing for healers all the way through the attack there by you running the Rage Gem might actually be more healing in the long term than the Heal Tome. So, I, I don't know. I'm a big fan of the Rage Gem with Rewriters, especially if we're going to run healers with it. The former Navi and, I guess before that, Milicim MG player, Synthen with a Super Archer Bomb into Super Barbarians. I don't see a lot of this attack here anymore recently. Like, everybody's switching over to the Super Archers and Root Riders. So the Super Barbarians have kind of fallen to the wayside for most players, but since they invest the Warden to deliver the blimp, able to land all the way in there, and needs to secure the town takedown, otherwise this is all for nothing, but the Warden able to give the Life Gem and the Eternal Tome. No extra levels on that, surprisingly. I think with that specific setup there, I think that the Rage Gem tends to do a little bit better because the Rage Gem boosts the balloons, and then if you get the Warden to follow the Super Archers in the base there like that afterwards, then you keep the Super Archers Rage, because often the Rage Bell falls off of the Super Archers, because they're under invisibility for so long that the Rage Bell just doesn't have the time to be able to last that long. And so I think the Rage Gem on the Warden does have a higher benefit right there, but for other hero equipment, none. <laughs> Is this the second account or something like that? Maybe this is, a, it's the number five on the map here. Maybe this is Synthes, like, one of his various alternate accounts there. Because I know a lot of these pro players have multiple accounts. And it is kind of weird to see that a player like Synthe would not have any progress on those. And he popped a hero potion and a power potion. I guess we just got to see what he looks like on defense here. Because maybe he's running a secondary account here. And maybe... He's the weakest link on the team. That would be kind of surprising, right? I wonder where his main account is. I know a lot of these players are getting their main accounts continuing to progress when they're taking... They only bring him out for, like, the biggest opponents there. And so when they're playing against a team that's, like, middle of the road there, I guess high end of the middle of the road there, like Glimmer and so I think they're pretty good. But they're not, like, facing off against Navi or Tribe Gaming or something like that, right? Um, but... I think this is probably a secondary account for him. I have to assume that. However, it doesn't seem to slow him down. Maybe he doesn't even have Root Riders unlocked. <laughs> I don't even know. Maybe. But he uses his Super Barbs. He gets the job done. He gets the triple. And he makes it work anyways. We took a glance at Synthes profile and he doesn't seem to have almost any progress it looks like he's like day one in a town hall 60 with like a hammer onto the town hall itself so i bet you that he is wait this is him on defense wait a second okay synthe now on defense and we see that he does have the ricochet cannons does he have the multi-arch towers yes he does he's got one there i only see one though so maybe the other one's under construction I don't know what's going on here. Uh, this has to be a secondary account here for Synthe because he had almost no progress on his heroes other than like two levels on his ward and one on his queen. And Town Hall 16 has been out for a long time. So this has to be a second account there. But it looks like this dragon attack here just broadsides. It drops in a super minion bomb. We're able to secure the Town Hall takedown and also got the clan castle destroyed there. I didn't see if anything came out of there. But I don't think, I don't think much did. And he's able to... Destroy the building before anything heavy did drop out, so that's out of the way. Warden ends up surviving, running level 11 Rage Gem on that. No level 12. You want that level 12. Level 12 is a big benchmark. Level 15 is a big benchmark. But he does have a level 17 Giant Gauntlet. Like, if he just took that same Shiny Ore off of the Giant Gauntlet and pumped it into the Rage Gem, the Dragons would have been in a much better spot. And honestly, Rage Gem with these Dragon Attacks there where we're using all the spells into the super minion bomb or super archer bomb is very, very strong because we talk about it a lot where the rage gem is going to be the most beneficial on attacks that are investing their spells on something other than your main force into rages. So if you're investing into 
a super minion or a super archer bomb instead, then the range gem is going to give a big, big boost for the dragon. But the queen steps through, RC going to pick up the slack there where she left off, and he does have enough for the RC to finish out the base here. So it's a triple for Limerence. They match it again. We stay tied after three exchanges. And now we go into the final two attacks for each team and time is going to start to be a factor. Aha! <laughs> there he is. We found his main account. We knew that that was definitely not his main here. He must be spun in a random spin because currently he's number 20 in the world on the Legend League leaderboard. So, yeah, he's around there. But our next attack is live, so let's dive into Ninja. Going in with a Rue Rider attack. It looks like he's got a bunch of Rue Riders with a Queen Charge. Gonna start it off here with a Yeti Bomb. Go after the Artillery. Go after that Expo. Get anything on top of that, that'd be a nice extra bonus, but not necessary. Just get the long range defenses out of the way first. I'm still more scared of an expo than I am a ricochet cannon. The ricochet cannons are cool, they do a lot of damage, but the expo having the ability to take such a long range ends up being more dangerous most of the times because a lot of times you get a lot of damage when you can't even reach them, and it just stacks on top of all the other defenses. So Ricochet Cannon would be lower priority than that Expo there, but it looks like he does take that as, as his funnel, and he'll start to make his way in. Got a Tessa farm. All four, or all five Tessas right there popped up, and he'll just round out and make his way in towards the Monolith. Also, we're a champion right there. For here equipment, we're looking at a level 21 Giant Gauntlet. Lots of progress right there, but also making sure to hit those benchmark levels. Level 17 there, but looks like he's currently working on his invisibility vial, but he already maxed out his healing tome and eternal tome, and he pumped a little bit into his RC shield, but then stopped. All right, I think he made good choices there. Does need to make sure this multi-arch tower doesn't wreck his queen's healers. Works very similar to a multi-inferno there, but shoot in three arrows. If there's only one target, it shoots all three arrows at that target. If there are three targets, as potential, it'll shoot all three of them. So it is picking away there, but they will go invisible and get the damage off of him. And now we can pop that Eternal Tome and Healing Tome and push the Root Riders through. No Rage Gem on these Root Riders. And he's not casting a Rage either. So he'll get the HP recovery there. But his Warden is sitting... Well, he went invisible. He's got his John Cena skin there. Probably use code Eric for that. If you haven't put in a creator code before you bought something, then uh, please do so. It definitely helps out a lot to support the channel, and I appreciate it. But all the Rune Riders seem to have died out now. And the Queen has still... I don't know if she, I don't know if she can survive here. The Ricochet Cannon plus the Expo. Plus the Queen on the side there. It's down to the Royal Champion. She has to pick up the slack here, but she's getting intercepted by the Royal Champion. I think he misses. I think he misses. No, invisibility for the Spirit Fox saves her, passes the defenses off, and then she goes to ability. Come on, heal us, try to save her. Spirit Fox saves her again. Spirit Fox is doing some good work here. Ricochet Cannon goes down. All right, Expo still working. Wall breaks through, but that obviously doesn't do anything for the Road Champion, but she's still alive. Healers go down. Expo drops. One more invisibility, and the Inferno goes down. Oh my god, it's a time fail. What? Ah! <laughs> oh, rip. I didn't even watch the clock. I didn't even see the clock. I'll be real with you. I thought he had the trip. I thought he pulled it back there, but no! It is a time fail. And Limerence now has taken time out of the equation. And now they just need a triple to take the lead. Mia San Mia with the pressure on will now go in against the number one of the map here, Ninja. Number five versus number one. We got a power potion. We got a hero potion. And for hero levels, we got a level 12 giant gauntlet. A healing tome, which will be used right here with these balloons. Not the greatest value out of a healing tome. It's really difficult what to decide what to use there to go pair with these super archer bombs. But I guess everything is roughly equivalent, right? You're not getting a ton of value out of any equipment when the ward is basically just diving in to die. But he does drop in the Super Archers and lands them right into the very, very middle of the base. If he could get the scatter shots down there, there'd be a big pickup. But 
So he's getting some shots through the expo. Almost gets that expo down as he hits the rage tower. Switches over to the multi inferno. Gonna get that multi? Yeah, maybe. Nope, not quite. Does not get the multi. And now ice golems will freeze up these super archers, and that's the end of their value. But he still needs to get the tunnel down. Root riders will begin in. This is what I thought that I would have expected out of Synthe. But because he ran an account that doesn't even have root riders unlocked, it wasn't even an option for him because his main account is too busy. Probably just running, running random wars there and obviously playing in the very high end of Legend League. But Root Riders are a very, very strong option here. But not having the Warden is a big detriment to the stack here. If you're going to use the Warden to deliver that blimp and not have him to support the Root Riders here, then you're losing out on the Rage. Like, the Root Riders are more just for tanking than anything. For open up the walls for the heroes and to provide tanking all the way through the base. The... Rage Gem with the Warden is massively beneficial for this deck because it boosts the damage of the Warden and allows the Warden or to boost every hero's damage. The Queen of the King do way more damage, and then if you just use Super Barbs to keep them attacking defenses and Root Riders to give them axes and tank for them, then that's how you get it done. But he seems to be doing all right here regardless. Still moving through strong. Just got a couple of... Base equipment, hero abilities left to carry him through, but the RCO Popper ability there clear out the bulk of the hardest hitting defenses. Exposed to really the only thing that can really stop this right now, but the Queen Abilities will quickly handle that. She'll pop it. Generator Archers, plenty of protection right there, and he does get it done. So there we go. Limerence now controls the war. They're up by two buildings at a star. VM Legacy must triple now, and they have to find a defense. And now the former Tribe Gaming and I guess also former United Gaming player, Fluxy, now in. He played with Tribe Gaming when he had his World Championship appearance. I usually prioritize that when I announce him, but <laughs> let's see if we can do here as he dives his queen in. Yeti Bomb, able to clear out a couple of the abilities there, but the Expo's under range, doing a lot of damage to this queen, but she does not go to ability. She hangs in there. As he gets set up for this Queen Charge into Root Rider attack. For Hero Equipment, we got level 17, level 17 with the Giant Gauntlet. Maxed out on his Invisibility Vial and maxed out the Healing Tome with the Eternal Tome. Once again, seeing Healing Tome over Rage Gem. And I don't know, I think, I think it's really up for debate which one is better. I'm kind of curious what you guys think. What is actually better? The Healing Tome or the Rage Gem when we're running Root Riders? Because we're seeing a lot of mix of both of them. And we're seeing mixed success. I, I don't know. I, I'm curious what everybody thinks. But the Queen going to make her way towards the Town Hall. Root Riders going to the very bottom base there. And the King is just diving all the way in there with his giant gauntlet able to get a pretty solid amount of value there but also take some damage away from the queen that she would potentially receive in the near future but he does go ahead and pop that internal tome healing tome will top him back off there and you're not getting extra damage out of the world champion of the warden when you're running like this however you are getting more time of tanking so it does end up being a little bit slower overall but i mean what is a bigger benefit saving your tanking or just move faster so that you need less tanking because you cleared out the defense quicker. I guess there's benefits for both of them. But I, I'm, I'm very curious if we see in the future that people will run Rage Gem and Healing Tome and put the Eternal Tome away. That would be very interesting. But Fluxy is get it done here. He's got a Queen ability. He's got a Road Champion ability. Monolith goes down. Plenty of tanking stays out front there. All these Root Riders surviving. So maybe there is some benefit to that. Maybe that is really good. Also, I noticed that he didn't run... An apprentice warden here he could have ran an apprentice warden and got a bunch of extra hp out of that and honestly the healing tome and a single apprentice warden are very similar in the overall amount of hp that they are able to provide so i'm kind of surprised he didn't bring one and now the moment of truth scoping needs to hold it together here i do think that the most correct call in the last attack would have been to run the Healing Tome and an Apprentice Warden, because obviously you can just benefit from both of them and then have an enormous HP pool of tanking. But this one is going to run the Root Riders and the Rage Gem. And we get to put it to the test here. Which is better? Or are they equivalent? Level 17, Giant Gauntlet and Rage Vial. Level 17, Invisibility Vial. And he's got the level 10 
Rage Gem with the Eternal Tome. Also, it looks like he also maxed out his RC code, but it looks like he's been doing a lot of work there with the Shiny Orb, but maybe he's just a little bit short on Glowy Orb because I see a lot of his stuff there one level short of getting that extra bonus there that you would get there at that third level increment. But Queen starts to pick up damage here. She steps to the Monolith. Need to keep the Queen alive. Okay, healers are outside of the range right now. He's in danger. Got a couple of balloons out there that get the Tornado Trap Bridger, get the Clan Castle partially pulled here. Poison's it up there, but he only got a partial pull there, so he needs to get the extra Clan Castle troops dealt with. And here comes more archers, no poison. He's got the poison still lingering. He freezes, and he's able to lock it down a little bit there. Archer sunk the poison, got the ball down. Queen is finding a little bit of safety, but the battle drum to the right side of the base there. We'll go get the multi archer tower down and make its way in to stun that expo and reduce some damage to the area. Queen picks up the tank of the expo, so that looking good. Right is in for the left. King goes to the outside. King with giant gauntlet should be able to clear out the compartment there and honestly survive way past that and search all the way across the top of the base there, keeping everybody central. But the world champion was delayed. I don't know why. You would think to delay your world champion. That must have been a mistake right there. But the King of Hobbit's ability up top. Great ability already used. A couple of freezes. A little bit of rage. Has to hold it together here all the way to the end. A lot of the Rune Riders are dying out though. No healing dome. They're down to low HP. But have they done enough is the question. He's got an Apprentice Warden boosting their HP. So they had a pretty solid HP pool. But the King making his way over to the defensive world champion. He does get ahead of his down. He'll go to Phoenix there, but Phoenix will get him through that. And it looks like he's got the RC with the ability there. He'll pop it right there. It looks like he's had a couple more abilities to get through. Guys, he's got it under control. Battle Drill drops out. Yetis, Wiz is joining the outside of the base there over there. And they'll all collapse in on the final defenses. Limerence holds strong all the way to the finish. And I guess we got to go back for a couple collectors there. But I do have to wonder... If we saw that time fill finish, like even if it just ended like right on the mark, would we have seen a win for VM Legacy on time in that scenario? The time advantage was two seconds into Limerence's favor. So one way or another, if Ninja was able to convert that time fill to a triple, they still would have ended up losing on average attack time because Limerence was just a little bit too fast.